Hey, what's going on everyone? Ryan here, welcome back to another video. So I've got a really interesting concept today. We're gonna do an aquarium case. So I'll tell you the background, the scenario, what's going on, and then at the end, I'll review the answer, tell you how I figured it out, and then we're gonna talk about what I did next. So let's get started and dive right into it. All right, everyone, so this is the curious case. I want you to ignore the blue-green water. I'm treating the tank for some ick. And this is an indirect effect of what's going on in this tank. But most noticeably, what do you notice different about this tank? Now, there's a 75 gallons, plenty of swimming space. But why are all the fish gathered on this side of the tank? Even my Congo Tetras, look, they're hiding amongst those plants. And these guys are usually really, really bold and they'll go out and like start begging for food. So they should be up here swimming around left and right. And why is there no fish on this side? And I want you guys to think about what's going on. Here's a plant list. I mean, sorry, here's a fish list of all the species that I keep in here. And I want you guys to think about what could possibly be happening. And if you found this in your tank, what would you do? So I'll give you some time on the clock. Here's the scenario, and I want you guys to try and figure out what's going on. All right, everyone, so if you're still thinking about the scenario and reading the new information, I want you to pause this video right now because I'm about to tell you how I think through this problem and show you the answer. So when I see something like this happen, the first thing that I wanna do is I want to sort of feed the fish and see what's going on. So is there a particularly sick fish or is there something that's you know stopping these fish from going over here? So it is true that I usually feed on this corner because the outflow of the tank is up here in the way in the back so that the flow kind of circles from the back to the front, hits that pane of glass on the side and then just moves all the way down to the inflow. So this is where the water goes in, into my canister filter. And what that does by feeding on this side is that the food particles that aren't eaten immediately will kind of travel along the length of this tank. But, you know, I'm not feeding the fish right now. They've been fed, so they should be swimming left and right. So then the next thing I wanna do is you think about the signs of stress. So you know that, um, the fish here are supposed to be out swimming around, but they're hiding. And so are a lot of my cardinal tetras and my rummy nose tetras. So then you're like, okay, well, the cardinals are hiding. Every other tetra is hiding. These mosquito fish are kind of still swimming around, so it doesn't seem like it's really bothering them. And then you start looking at these German blue rams. And, and do you guys see that? That's a female right there. And that's a male. And she keeps chasing this male here so here now you got to think about what usually happens in this tank well i know for sure that i have three german blue rams in here two males and one female the female is the smallest fish of all three of them so 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 to have that female be out here chasing the largest male of the tank. This should this should be like alarm bells ringing in your head. Something is going on. In order to have this male kind of so scared and just chilling here amongst the brush, these German blue rams are really not that scared of people. So they'll come out and especially these are fish that I've kept for months now. They know who I am and they always come begging for food. And that's when you start to realize like, hey, I'm not really seeing the female unless she's out here chasing people. I can't even tell where the other male is. So very likely it has something to do with these German blue rams. And knowing that a male and a female is missing is like basically telling you the answer at this point. And sure enough, I started looking in the back, okay? Looking for any sort of flat objects that they could be, you know, chilling around. And I find this, okay? Look at that female just chilling out there in the back the very, very back of this aquarium. And this is the answer right there. They've been laying eggs, they've breed. Now, I left this morning, everything was fine. I come back, all the fish on one side, they're chasing each other, this German blue ram. Oh, okay, so, so that was the male in the back, the female's up front. And she's kind of chasing away 
that male? What's going on? Well, they had babies, okay? And this is the couple in question. Look how beautiful these two are. Look at that, that's the male right here on the right. On the left is the female, you can tell because she's got a really pink belly. Oh, sorry, got a really pink belly. And the male is a little bit bigger, but you can't really use size to determine what's going on. You gotta look at the coloration on these two fish. Oh, and then the male went right back. And then here is the female. Unfortunately, with everything else going on in the tank, these eggs are not safe. So we're gonna have to do something pretty darn drastic. So I'm going to remove these eggs and uh, I'll show you what, what, I, what I do after that. I wanna like actually touch the eggs. So I guess it's like, this egg. Oh. oh yeah. Yeah. Let me show you guys a better view. Well, there you are, folks. These are the German blue ram eggs. You can kind of see them on the rock. If you put them in there, look at all of them. Bing chilling. So we're gonna have to actually uh, take care of these ourselves. So what I've done is actually set up this fluval breeder box. Now, what I really like about this box is that it provides flow from the tank that they respond in and you can kind of keep the babies here and then over here there's a little sort of mesh i added this part but um there's a return that goes right back into the main breeding box uh the main breeding tank that your that, that my rams were in so i'll have a link in the description of this specific one this is a fluval breeding box the large size because um, these German Blue Ram babies will come out pretty big. So that's why I have the large size. And then it's just powered by an airline. So I've got an airline right here going under and it kind of uses that sponge filter sort of concept to suck up all that water. And there's like a nice little trickle. And then this is where the overflow goes. So I've got some moss in here, some subwasser tang, and that's about it. There's nothing else in this tank. And this is where the babies are going to be for the next couple of days. And I think I'm gonna keep them in here even when I start to raise them. So the only thing I do, I'm super careful of, is to avoid scratching the, the glass itself with that rock, oh, sorry, the acrylic with the rock because this is made out of acrylic and it's very easily scratched. So try to be really careful with that. And I'm going to put these eggs right under the inflow so that there's plenty of water movement going across those eggs and uh, they don't fungus up for me. Now, for the first couple of days, once they hatch, they'll be wigglers. So it'll look like a furry rock or a furry like bottom where they don't really need any food. And all I'm doing is just making sure they've got clean water for the first couple of days. But after that, they can go straight into baby brine shrimp. Let me try and get a selfie with these German blue ram eggs. How's that? How's that for a thumbnail, huh? <laughs> but anyways, so the reason why I'm saying that ick was related to this in some way is that for the last couple of days, this German blue ram pair has been chasing all my other fish around as they start scouting for a place to lay their eggs. This obviously stresses out the other fish and when fish are stressed, their immune system suffers and that's why they were infected with ick. So I actually came home today, fed the fish, saw the ick on my fish and I was like, hmm, what's going on? So then upon further investigation, that's how I found this problem. So everything in this tank is connected in some way. Now, if you are planning ahead, then you can do something like this using a flat river stone and just plant them in sort of secluded spots around the tank. You want to give them a couple of different options, so a couple of different stones, and then most, more than likely, you know, 95% of the time, they're going to pick one of these stones, but make sure it's in the back and since it's in a secluded spot. Now, even if you don't have a rock or something that they can lay their eggs on, a lot of times they'll just make an indent in the actual aqua soil and they're gonna lay their eggs on the actual aqua soil before. So I've had that also happen. It's a little harder to remove the eggs manually because you're kind of digging around and trying not to crush the eggs, which is why I really like these river stones and these little pieces of dragon stone. It's super, super helpful. 
So my dad is going to be taking care of these fish for the first week or two weeks or so because I'm going to be in London. So that's my complicating factor. I will be in England away from these fish and like literally two days before my flight, my fish had babies. So, you know, comment down below if you think my dad can do it because um, yeah, I'm gonna have to show him how to hatch my baby brine shrimp and all that. For the next two days, these guys will hatch out, become wigglers and around that time is when I'm flying. So, so mm, yeah, it's gonna be kind of rough because my dad's gonna have to do my baby brine shrimp hatching, all of that stuff by himself. I'm gonna FaceTime him every day and just walk him through what to do. But again, it's gonna be an interesting, interesting time. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. It is like crazy. I come back home and found these guys had laid eggs. This morning, everything was fine. But the cool thing is like after I pulled their eggs, the German blue rams were still chasing all the other fish around being like, get away from my nest. And then it was really fun because I didn't get this on video, but like the female was there when I pulled the eggs, the males were out there chasing other people. So then it took him like 10 minutes to figure out that his eggs had been gone. And even then it's been about two hours. Oh, okay, maybe an hour or so. And they're still chasing people like on one side of the tank. So um, the fish are kind of slow in that. They, I think they're in denial that I've already pulled their eggs and they don't have any more eggs left. But you know, in about two weeks or so, they're gonna have another batch. The time of lighting, the lighting time is incredibly important because I went from six hours of light every day to like nine. Okay, so that goes from like winter lighting to summer lighting. And as soon as I went to summer lighting, they started breeding because they're like, oh, it's summer. The light cycle is super important here. So a lot of times people are fighting algae and everything. And then you realize, hey, if I increase the light levels and increase the duration of light each day, my fish might start breeding. So that's another factor to think about. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this super quick video. I hope that this concept was interesting, doing like a problem and then what to do and like how to figure things out. So anyways, I really, really appreciate everyone out here supporting my videos and I'll see you in the next video.